me to be here with you today and, and to see all your smiling faces. And I wanted to, I promised to share with you Maxwell's story about what makes Maxwell so sleepy. And then I'll tell you a story um, that I, um, I feel God wants me to share with you today. But um, Maxwell is known all over the world as the sleepiest dog ever. And the reason Maxwell so sleepy is because Jesus makes him sleepy. Why did I say? Jesus makes him sleepy. That's right. And I think when we when I, you hear my story, I think you'll agree with me that Jesus makes him sleepy. Um, what most people don't know about me is that I'm terrified of animals, especially dogs. And I usually don't share with you why I'm terrified of them, but I have good reasons. And I am really, really afraid of dogs. I'm afraid of the little ones, the medium ones, the big ones. I'm really afraid of the big ones. And so um, when we first started our kids' time almost 20 years ago, we had a beautiful set. It's about four times the size of this room. And, uh, and, and I have a story in one of my books uh, about how that set even got built and started. And it's a pretty amazing story. But after a while, it deteriorated, and we needed to, to have a new set. And so we went in a whole different build, and we built this beautiful, brand new set with, um, does anybody watch kids? I know what color my house is on the set. It's yellow. Yellow, that's right. I have a nice yellow house, and we've got stairs. We have a, have a patio. We have an octagon with the grand piano. And then we have a beautiful gardens as well. And, um, and for those of you also that were wondering how to watch, you can watch on your smartphones. You can watch, go to just download 3AD and Kids um, TV and download our app, and you can watch whatever you want when you want to watch it. And, um, and you can also watch on your computers. Just go to 3AD and Kids TV. Um, so when we got our new studio, it's one week before we're getting ready to record in it. And our director, Brad Walker, was in the studio looking at the set. And I walked in behind him and I go, oh, Brad, isn't this a beautiful set that God gave us? Yeah. I said, what do you mean? Yeah, this is gorgeous. That doesn't look very kid-friendly to me. What do you mean? Well, we need some toys. We need to have a bicycle up against the house and a basketball hoop and some toys, on, maybe soccer balls in the, in the yard. We need some toys. And I looked at Brad and I said, Brad, when God first called me to produce this program, I prayed and prayed and prayed about what the set should even look like, what should be on the program. And God impressed me that I didn't need to dangle toys up here to point kids to Jesus, that I should focus on his two books. What are his two books, kids? Bible and nature. What are God's two books? Bible and nature. I said, we might have a new set, but God's instructions to me are the same. No toys. Well, if you're not going to have toys, at least get it off. And I was so adamant that we not have toys because I knew that God didn't want me to do that, that I folded my hands and I just said, well, if it's between toys and a dog, we'll have a dog. He said, good, I hope you come back with a dog. And he left and I went, oh, no. Lord, what am I going to do? You know I can't have a dog in the program. Why, if I had a dog in the program, Lord, you know me. You know how afraid a dog I am. Why, if a dog barked at me, I would scream, and uh, I can't have that on camera. And if a dog jumped on me, I'd pass out. I can't host a program if I'd pass out. And if a dog licked me, I would throw up. Nobody wants to see that. Lord, surely you don't want me to have a dog in the program. And the more I prayed and prayed and prayed, the more God impressed me. Miss Brenda, most people are normal. They like dogs. <laughs> and um, I said, okay, Lord, I surrender. I will be obedient. We'll have a dog. But, Lord, can you give me a dog that won't jump on me, won't bark at me, and definitely won't <laughs> lick me? Oh, that would be so nasty. And I started praying. And I asked all the three of the employees to bring their dogs the next day to see if any of them would be a good kid's time dog. Oh, they were excited. All of them wanted their dog to be the celebrity dog that was going to be on TV. So they all lined up in the hallway. I'm in the studio. Our camera guys are there because they're going to film and see how he does on TV. And my floor director says, you ready, Miss Brenda? And I said, yes. And I'm praying, dear Jesus, please help me. Please help me. And the studio door opens. And this little bitty dog comes right down. And he's getting closer. He's getting closer. Ah! 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 He's attacking me! He's attacking me! And I ran out the back door. <laughs> and my board director ran after me. He said, Miss Brenda, Miss Brenda, he said, are you okay? And I said, no, that dog was going to eat me. What do you think? I'm not okay. He said, uh, Miss Brenda, um, normally with that little bitty dog, he said, 
that little poodle dog when it hurt nobody. Okay. You ready for the next dog? All right. All right. Jesus, please help me be brave. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What's Philippians 4.13? I can do how much? All things through Christ who strengthens me. The door opens. And in saunters in this big old dog. He looks old and he's just sauntering now. Getting close to me. He's got big old jowls and he's got drool just dripping down on his <laughs> mouth is dripping on the floor and he's just sauntering towards me. He's getting closer. <laughs> 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 ah! 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 ran out the back door. And they came and dog after dog after dog. I would scream when they get even about halfway there and, and start running. And I was shaking so bad, they finally called us and everybody else home. And our camera guys, who really aren't Christian, um, they, they said, uh, they started taking bets. Who thinks Miss Brenda is going to have a dog on this show? Ain't no way. Well, my new, we, found, we did find a dog house. And it fit beautifully right there on the, on the, um, on the, between the piano and the house. But no dog. We recorded all day Monday. No dog. All day Tuesday, no dog. All day Wednesday, and my friend said, Miss Brenda, you are ruining this show. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean I'm ruining this show? You're forcing me to stay on all these close-up shots. I can't keep showing a wide shot with a doghouse and no dog. I said, well, I am going to an animal shelter today. Someone called me last night. There was a dog on TV that's up for adoption. And I called the, the director, Amanda, and she said she would stay open later so I could come and see this dog. Well, good. I sure hope you come back with the dog. I said, well, Mitch, our, one of our camera guys, said that if we did find a dog, he would take care of it for me. So Mitch and I headed off to the animal shelter. Do they have animal shelters here in Tasmania? Yes, they are in the have you, how, how many of you have ever seen an animal shelter? Uh, so many of you have. I had never seen one. I don't know what yours look like here. But this particular animal shelter, and I've only seen one in my life, this one, um, it had a very narrow sidewalk. So narrow that you had to be really careful not to touch the cages on each side of you. Only room for one person to walk. And there was cages all along this side and cages all along this side. And as soon as Amanda, the director, opened the door and said, right this way, Miss Brenda, all those dogs went, and I'm like, and it stunk so bad in there. Pee! You didn't stink in there. Boom! But I, well, yeah, there was, I didn't know that they poop in their cages, but it wasn't good. So I'm now going forward, and they're saying, go on, Miss Brenda. And Amanda was behind me, and Mitch was behind her. We're all single file, because remember the sidewalk is so narrow. So we got about halfway in, and I forgot about how narrow that sidewalk was. And I turned to say something to Amanda, and when I did, I backed up and touched the cage of a great big old bulldog who went, oh, like that. And I scared me so bad, I jumped into Amanda's arms, and it pushed her down on the cage behind her, and I've got my arms wrapped around her neck. I don't even know I'm choking her. And Mitch is trying to get my hands off her neck, and I went, and she, Amanda's going, uh, 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 Miss Brenda, uh, are you sure you want a dog? And I said, I'm sure. Sure, I don't. I said, but, but, but I'm sure God wants me to. And she started laughing. And she said, well, maybe you should just go wait in the lobby. So we backed up out of there. We all had to back up. And I went in the lobby to wait. And they went in to get the dog. And now I'm in the lobby. I sit down. And my legs are just, my high heels are just tapping on that tile floor. And it's just, click, 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 click. And I was so nervous. My legs were shaking so bad. All of a sudden, and in came this black dog. And he just got closer. And closer. And closer. And as he got so close to me, I was so afraid. I couldn't run. I couldn't scream. I couldn't do anything. And I was just paralyzed. And dog came up to me. He looked up at me. And he looked down at me. And he laid down. And his head went down. And went, whoop, went right to sleep. And the whole time I sat there, he was sleeping. And when Amanda 
Amanda wanted me to come look at something, I got up to go look. The dog got up and followed me. And when we stood down, stood for a minute, he sat down, put his head down, whoop, went to sleep. Thank you, Jesus, that you gave me my dog. I was so excited. So Mitch brought the dog the next day to the, to the uh, studio. And I'm up in the front by the yellow house. And the studio door opens. And the dog just kind of pranced in quietly, reverently, like he knew he was working for Jesus. And I, not used to working with dogs, I just pointed, and wherever I pointed, he went. No training. I just point, and he'd go there. He'd stop to get his scarf on, because he'd wear a scarf that either matched what I was wearing, or would match whatever the child that was singing was wearing. And when I was at the piano, and the little girl was getting ready to sing, and I had pointed for the dog to just lay right there by me, and the Ford director, Larry, went, five, four, three, two, and dropped his hand. The dog's head went, bloop, and went right to sleep. <laughs> and he didn't wake up until the Ford director went, all clear, and his head would pop right up. Do you know, boys and girls, Maxwell faithfully slept on every single program for 10 years. <laughs> Every program. Now you can say that maybe it was a coincidence that he slept on a couple programs, right? But every program for 10 years, let me tell you what, our God is faithful and he rewards our obedience. I w even though I didn't want a dog in the program, even though I was terrified, I was obedient to what God was asking me to do. And God answered my prayer because in all those 10 years, that dog never barked at me. Never jumped at me, and he never licked me. Now I ask you, who do you think made Maxwell sleep? That's right. Isn't God good? He is faithful, and he loves us so much. And there's not anything too little or too big we can't pray about. And Jesus really, truly answers prayer. So when, I, when Maxwell passed away last year, I started praying for another dog. I said, Lord, I said... Either can you please either make me not afraid of dogs or can you give me a dog I'm not afraid of. Well, won't lick me, won't jump on me, and won't bark at me. And through a whole long series of events, which will probably be in the Maxwell story, by the way, is in my bedtime short books. I, does the school have a, I have a set of my books here? Bedtime, I have Miss Brenda's bedtime story books. We need them. Yeah. Um, but there, there's a five volume. They're all full of, of true character village stories. Um, and uh, there's a story, a natural story, is in the book with the picture, so you can see Maxwell, the kid's son, dog in there. But um, Teddy Bear's story will probably be in the next book, because God answered my prayer in such a beautiful way. And I'm not afraid of Teddy Bear at all. In fact, that picture you saw of Teddy Bear is, was at a program that I just did with him, and he slept on my lap for the entire show. Almost. And, I mean, and I'm not afraid of him at all. So I know God answered my prayer in a special way. So again, who makes who makes uh, Maxwell sleepy? God. God. What if, what, if, what if that little dog went up to you when you when you was morning and you were still sleeping, and you were sleeping, and he licked you on the lips? I would throw up, but <laughs> I, I would definitely throw up. But that would never happen because um, Teddy Bear doesn't live with me. I have somebody that takes care of him for me. First of all, Miss Brenda travels all over the world too much to have a dog with me at at all times, and um, and I. I don't think I could live in the same house with a dog. <laughs> yes.